Everybody, Greg coming here from Good News for Israel, and today we're taking five and Selah. Just spend some time appreciating the Lord. A good thing to do. King David spoke of it often in the Psalms. Selah. Pause. Consider. So uh, we're continuing on with our series about Abram and and the Lord's promise to him to your descendants. I will give this land from Genesis chapter twelve verse seven. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about who has actually given the land. Um, we've learned that it is God who owns the earth and its fullness, and we've learned that before God can, uh, that, sorry, that God can give it to whoever He wishes. It's He as He can give it to whoever He wants to. Uh, and here's Abram at Shechem, and He proclaims to Abram, "You to your descendants, I will give this land." The previous verse explains that there are already people who are living in the land, the Canaanites. And no doubt they have been buying and, and selling property houses and blocks of land, just like we do today. But does God seem to make any adjustments regarding his statement to Abram like, well, Abram, I plan to give you this land, but there's already lots of people who own it already, so I'm going to have to go and, and get all the ownership title deeds from them and then start the negotiation process. Or something like, I'm pretty wealthy, so it shouldn't be a problem, but it may take a while through the appropriate channels, official protocols, and you know, seeing the village headmen, the chiefs, the mayors of the towns, the local state governments, satraps, uh, governors, get permissions from the king, etc. Do you think God said any of that to Abram? No, none of that. He just said, to your descendants, I will give this land. Why? Because it's his to give. So what about the people who were in possession at the time, the Canaanites? The truth is that whenever they arrived after Noah's flood a few hundred years earlier, they just wandered in and inhabited the land because it was vacant. They rolled in on their camels and their donkeys and they set up fences and picketed out their boundaries and put up their tents and basically assumed ownership. But in fact, they had not received permission or title deeds from the original owner at all. From God. But being a benevolent God, he allowed them to stay there, to squat there and use the land, use the nutrients of the ground, the water, the lakes, all the trees, the animals on the land, etc. But all until it was time for him to do with it what he intended from the start. So on this day, when he appeared to Abram in Shechem, he told Abram what he was going to do with the land. I am going to give it to your descendants, Abram. Actually, he didn't technically give the land to Abram in this proclamation. Who did he give it to? He gave it to Abram's descendants. Now, here's a question. What do you think about your own property? Your own land that you own. I own. Who really owns it? The government? You? Or God? And what do you say about the people who lived in the very specific block of land that God had already intended to give to Abram's descendants, the Canaanites? Did they own the land? Did they have any ultimate rights to that particular piece of land? What if they'd lived there for 50 years? What if they'd lived there for 100 years or 500 years? Is this whole system fair? Or are these simply the rules of ownership decided on by the original creator of the land? Having said that, can you see a similar situation happening currently in the very same block of land? If so, then who actually has been given the land by God, who is the owner of the land? And if so, who are you supporting in this very real and current and ongoing discussion? The Lord's death and resurrection means that Jews and Gentiles have become the physical and non-physical descendants of Abraham. The Jews by natural means and the, the land belongs to them eternally, despite what sinful man may say via the Egyptian, Assyrian, Babylonian, Medo-Persian, Greek, Roman, Byzantine, Turkish, British Empire, or the European Union, or the United Nations, or the surrounding Arab nations. The land has been promised to Abram and his descendants specifically through Isaac 
and Jacob who is Israel. He appeared to Abram to tell him so in Shechem. And the Gentiles, by faith in Messiah Jesus, who have inherited eternal life, um, and I'll, I'll quickly say that because many of you will say that all people, both Jew and Gentile, must believe and accept that Jesus is the Messiah to be saved because the scripture says so. These believers, by faith in Messiah, have become inheritors of all the promises of Abram by having been grafted into what the scripture calls and uh, the Apostle Paul calls the cultivated olive tree, which is Israel, the roots of which are the promises that God gave to Abram and the covenant. Have a look at Galatians chapter 3, if you're in any doubt, verse 7. Therefore know, know that only those who are of, the, of faith are sons of Abraham. Verse 8, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Are you a Jewish person or a Gentile person? Whichever you are, are you a believer in Messiah Jesus? There's a good question to pause and consider. Selah. All right, well, that's it from me today. The Lord bless you. I pray you do pause and consider that question. It's a very important one. And until next time, God bless you and bye for now.